which is people here aren't full-time professional fighters or people living in monasteries that do nothing but train. You have a job, right? You have to get up and go to. You probably have a wife and kids. I know you have a wife and kids. Right? If you have consistent injuries all the time, that's not a way to live a modern life. The second thing also is that if I break my fingers in every class, how many classes am I going to attend? We wear gloves and shin guards and we spar headgear and mouthpieces. So we can go hard, we can go live, and we can still get up and then come back and do it the next day. Right? You do jujitsu, right? If I broke your arm every time we did arm bar, how much jujitsu would we do? That would be the last class. <laughs> <laughs> right? What we can do though is we can roll around and every time I get you in a submission, what do you do? Tap. You tap, right? And then what happens? We get up and we do it again. Over. Start all over again. It's the same concept. It's a randori concept. It comes from judo. Every martial art right now that's been, been that still is alive and active and, 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 and proving its worth, so to speak, has this concept. Whatever they want to call it, aliveness or randori or whatever. It happens to be that jujitsu and sanda both get it almost directly from, from originally from judo, from, from Kano, because Meda came over to Brazil and brought that concept. We got it a little less directly. It went to Sambo first, because Sambo was created by a Russian who had studied judo. And then the Russians came and set up a military program in communist China, and that's where we got the concept from.